Okay, it's still February the 21st, 2017, and um, I just couldn't quit thinking about how to test this amplifier. It's really a, kind of a no-brainer once I thought about it. Anyway, what I did, because this thing has a... Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the dark here, but since it has a... Um, since the 4-ohm tap is grounded because it uses negative feedback off the 16-ohm tap and the 0, I uh, just reversed the wires and made it uh, and grounded the 4-ohm tap, uh, put the common, which is common to everything in the room, uh, and then the hot on the ground. And ran it up here to these uh, big resistors and strapped them together just with some jumpers to make them 4 ohms. Okay, so I'm instead of running the amplifier into 8 ohms, I'm running it into 4 ohms. I'm running signal to noise right now, which is 81.9 dB. That's very quiet. The reason that this just plagued me, plagued me, tortured me, I guess that's the right word, tortured me is because I said, since I moved that little 10 ohm resistor from ground, did I increase the signal to noise ratio? Did I make it worse? And I did. This 81 dB is very quiet. You're not going to hear that out of even the most efficient speakers. So, there you go. I, again, I won't test both channels. I'll make this one really short. Uh, the next thing to do after testing the signal to noise is to uh, clear this guy. And let's go over here. Here's actually one I've already run on it at 75 watts. THD at 20 hertz is down at about 0.15 at 25.1 kilohertz. It's about, well, actually, you can read the last one. It's 0.58 at 25 kilohertz. At 20 kilohertz, it's about 0.4. That's at 75 watts. We'll run it once more. Um, let me start another one here just for the fun of it and we'll set uh, they want about 0.7 volts to drive it so let's put that at uh, 0.7 and then we'll say and let's see we want to run uh, 10 points and we say start and then it'll uh, say do you want to keep this well, then we have to look over here and see what kind of power we're running it at. We're running it at 102 watts. Uh, the test frequency, the reference frequency is a kilohertz, but it'll go down to 20.07% there. So we could crank it up just a hair, but that's okay. 102 watts. And uh, let's see how it performs there. So you can see it running real time. Okay, it started out at just a little over 0.2, quickly dropped down to the, oh, the 0.1 level. This doesn't take too long to run. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier instead of trying to isolate everything from everybody. That's pretty darn good right there. Look at that. 0.1%. Wow. 100 watts. That is really good. This has got to be top dog. I mean, th this thing's outperforming the Mac amps. It's a little more complicated. It would be uh, pretty difficult to repair, as I mentioned in my first video of it. But, uh, wow, this thing is amazing. I just had to do this. <laughs> I tried floating the grounds on them and it always found a path back to ground and I was just shaking my head. I, I give up. I quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. Well, you know I can't do that. That's not how we That's not how we figure things out by quitting. What are we at now? It's running a little slow there. 10 points per decade is a little slow. Okay, we're out at 12 kilohertz, so we're getting there. We're at 15. There it is. 20 kilohertz. 0.5%. 25 kilohertz, uh, 0.6. I'd call that a real hi-fi amp. What do you think, guys?